every town has that house. The one that once held dark secrets. You know the house? The one that no one will purchase? The one whose walls have seen blood? The one that even birds avoid? And the darkened windows resemble empty eye sockets? There are furtive, yet insistent whispers about that house. Murmurs that perhaps the house is best left alone, lest the dark stain left upon that abode's history seep into our own present day. James Caskey, The Haunted History of New Orleans, Ghosts of the French Quarter. Welcome to the Eerie USA podcast. I'm your host, author, Evan Camby. I write horror and crime books, and I'm the creator of this podcast, where we discuss American legends, hauntings, and folklore. In today's episode, we'll be visiting the Dauphine Orleans Hotel in New Orleans, Louisiana, where they say some guests from the past never truly checked out. New Orleans is famous not just for Mardi Gras, but for its unique culture, history, and contagious joie de vivre. While the city excels in celebrating life, it's a place that doesn't shy away from death either. Known worldwide for its lively and joyous jazz funeral processions, as well as its above-ground cemeteries and ghost stories, New Orleans embraces its spookier side. The Dauphine Orleans Hotel, with its luxurious spaces and haunted history, truly embodies the duality of the city. A block away from the famous Bourbon Street, where trumpets sound against a backdrop of laughter and live music, a historic hotel named Dauphine Orleans contributes to the city's culture of the paranormal. Built sometime in the 1780s, the first owner was a man named Andre Almanester y Rojas, who also owned most of the real estate in the French Quarter. While he owned it, Rojas donated a portion of the land to Charity Hospital, which provided much needed care for the community, which had become ravaged by various diseases. Over the following century, ownership of the property would pass to various wealthy individuals, including Augustine McCarty, a relative of the nefarious Delphine LaLaurie. After McCarty, the land was owned by a man named Forneray a free person of color. One section of the hotel property belonged to a man named Samuel Hermann Sr., a German immigrant who made and lost a fortune in 19th century New Orleans, including his house, part of which now makes up the Dauphine Hotel. Perhaps the most famous or infamous part of the hotel is May Bailey's Lounge. Today, it's known as one of the most haunted bars in all of New Orleans. It originally earned its notoriety as a brothel, opened in 1857 by a woman named May Bailey 
who was left with little options for making a living when her father succumbed to the yellow fever epidemic ravaging the country. What made Bailey's place stand out in a town that was rife with prostitution was that they had a city license under the, quote, Ordinance Concerning Lewd and Abandoned Women. The hotel's bar proudly displays that license today, framed on a wall for its guests to see. While Bailey thrived as a businesswoman, her sister Millie, who was also employed there, resented her lot in life and wanted nothing more than to settle down and live a normal life. She thought she found her way out when she met and fell in love with a young Confederate soldier, and they soon made plans to marry. Tragically, the young man was murdered on their wedding day over a gambling dispute. For years afterwards, it's said that Millie Bailey wore her wedding dress around the brothel as much as possible, as her reminder of the life that was tragically taken from her. If May Bailey's was the well-mannered, professional brothel of New Orleans, the nearby White Elephant, now also owned by the Delphine Orleans Hotel, was its dark counterpart. It is said that the women who worked there were well known as pickpockets and thieves who were prone to violence against the men who visited them. While it's easy to villainize these women, they were often desperate for survival and unfortunately resorted to these crimes as a means to an end. One woman, Eliza Riddle, has a reputation that stands out above the rest. Arrested 24 times, Riddle spent 10 years at the Louisiana State Penitentiary for robbing one man of a grand $500 while he visited the White Elephant. A newspaper article from November 11th, 1882, titled A Bottle Battle, described a brawl between Eliza Riddle and Virginia Reed, another prostitute. Apparently, Riddle struck Virginia Reed with a glass bottle in the head, drawing blood. This was far from Riddle's first brawl, and it is rumored that she also once used a lamp as a weapon. She gained the title Creature of Dauphine Street when a reporter for the Times described her as, quote, one of the worst creatures on the infamous street. The Dauphine Orleans Hotel, as it is known today, opened its doors in 1969 and is known worldwide for its elegance and service, often holding weddings in its lush courtyard. Looking at the hotel's history, it is perhaps unsurprising that it's also known for its ghosts. So who, or what, haunts the corridors and grounds of the Dauphine Orleans? Well, for one, many would tell you that May Bailey's visitors, and even her sister Millie, still walk the halls of their former establishment. As I mentioned earlier, while May thrived running the brothel, Her sister resented the life she felt she had been forced into. 
She wanted more than years spent in the red light district and thought she'd finally gotten her chance to escape when she met a handsome Confederate soldier in 1861. After he was tragically killed on their wedding day and for years afterwards, Millie wore her wedding dress as often as she could throughout the sporting house. Today, visitors often report seeing a woman wearing a white lace gown, a forlorn, pleading expression on her face, as if she's looking for someone who has long since passed. She appears accompanied by a cold wind and is often seen in the lounge and along the patio. Another ghost reportedly seen by guests and employees is what appears to onlookers to be an eccentric and perhaps disturbed woman who they've seen dancing whimsically in the courtyard. Many believe she once worked at the bordello, then later became an alcoholic. It is said that this same spirit is responsible for moving the liquor bottles around in the bar, and may have also locked a few male guests inside of the bathroom. Her ghost, still confused and tormented in the afterlife, lingers in the place she once worked, reliving her days of dancing and sporting. Unsurprisingly, guests have also reported seeing a man dressed in a dark Confederate uniform. He is often seen pacing the outer courtyard, prompting some to call him the worried general, walking the grounds as if worrying about his troops. One paranormal group who investigated the Dauphine Orleans Hotel reported that their parapsychology team was told that the spirit's name is Eldridge. Of course, the romantics among us want to believe that this is Millie's long-lost love, also searching for her in the afterlife. Another theory is that this man is the ghost of one of the former patrons of May Bailey's. While New Orleans wasn't the direct site of any battles during the war, many soldiers who were either wounded or on leave visited brothels like Bailey's and the White Elephant. Perhaps some of the victims of the violent creature of Dauphine Street are still haunting the site. Patrons and employees alike agree that the hotel is haunted, particularly May Bailey's Lounge. Claims of glasses dropping off the hotel's bar top and shattering on the ground are common. Guests also report hearing sudden, inexplicable noises as they sit and sip cocktails. One employee once reported that she and a few other employees were standing in the reading nook near the front entrance of the bar and lounge when the brochures on the shelves came tumbling down, scattering to the ground. The following is a story quoted from GhostCityTours.com. Janice had arrived to work at her normal time, a bright and early 5.30 a.m. She shut the front door, heard the lock catch, and was nearly halfway down the bar when she felt the strangest urge to turn around, only to find that the door was open. Which paranormal entity was responsible 
for releasing the latch and swinging the door open, she'll never know. But it was perhaps one single event that had chills racing up Janice's spine. She'd gotten to work at her normal time, a blistering 5.30 a.m. She entered the bar just like any other day, except as she did so, she witnessed the first bar stool actually levitate off of the ground. That really frightened me when it raised off the floor, Janice murmured with a shake of her head. I'd actually seen it. Today, the first thing she does upon entering the bar is check out that bar stool. New Orleans, sometimes referred to as the Big Easy, is probably best known as a party city with a rich cultural history. What some might not know is that existing alongside the surface of the bright colors, music, and vibrancy is a thriving undercurrent of alleged paranormal activity, not the least of which occurs at the Dauphine Orleans Hotel. The residents don't bat an eye at this. The ghosts are as much a part of life there as jazz and Mardi Gras. I'll leave you with these words from Bob Dylan. The first thing you notice about New Orleans are the burying grounds, the cemeteries, and they're a cold proposition. One of the best things there are here. Going by, you try to be as quiet as possible. Better to let them sleep. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Eerie USA podcast. I appreciate every single download and listener and all of your support. If you enjoy the show, please leave us a review and don't forget to hit subscribe and consider sharing with a friend. You can support us on Patreon by visiting patreon.com slash Evan Camby. Patreon subscribers receive advanced episodes as well as weekly exclusive behind-the-scenes videos. For more scary stories, check out my books on my website, evancamby.com, my upcoming horror story collection, Walking After Midnight, Tales for Halloween Part 3, is available now for pre-order on Amazon for just $3.99. And it will be available in ebook and paperback format on October 1st, 2022. Join us for the next episode where we discuss the hauntings of Colonial Williamsburg, a site so authentic to its history that some ghosts still choose to call it home hundreds of years after their passing. Until next time, I'm your host, Evan Camby, bringing you America's forgotten places and forgotten people.